from a set of three other pairs, um, and it, it was all displayed as a group. And yeah, formally I was just making these kind of figurative elements and designing them to interact with each other and be structurally dependent on each other in some way um, to varying degrees of dependence or perhaps power and control over of one element over the other. They're soda fired, so it's that's why um, they get this atmospheric kind of wash of color and the transition is so soft it's a type of firing process, but that's about it. State University and I was in their Master of Fine Arts program. And um, this work is not from my thesis show, however, it is uh, a response of how I was working for my thesis show. It started out as being, a being about a sense of place. I came here from uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I was dealing with a lot of issues of dislocation, and so I was working with those concepts. And then as I was looking at my work, I started to notice that they were really speaking about the formal concepts of landscape and the environment. And those are things that are concerns of mine. Um, and so I started putting work together, speaking of the fragility of the world and the direction we're going. The piece is actually um, titled after this book of poems called Landscape, Landscape Art. Landscape, landscape at the end of the century, and I think that's really pertinent to, um, at, during this time when we think about maybe the memories of what the world was like and where we're going. I said PNCA. Yeah, PNCA. Um, and I think Sarah was mostly interested in. Um, this one's writing in a diary. Yeah. Why didn't you choose these two projects? It turned out just the color and everything. Um, in the printing process, the color shifts quite a bit, so I was kind of uh, pleasantly surprised with how this one turned out color wise. And then this one I just felt was sort of the strongest compositionally. I had some that were a little stronger in terms of the whole idea of it, but. I'm a visual person. I don't really like to go too far, too deep into stuff. So. Huh. You didn't have to write a thesis? No, I didn't actually. Got off easy. <laughs> I'm sure we could probe you. They originally were all on just flat color. Yeah. So they were all on this light. Like this one's entirely lighter. Yeah. And just looking at them, it was kind of really stark. I was kind of modeling it after, I don't know if you've seen it, like stencil graffiti. Like the stencil, like Banksy from the UK and that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's just super high contrast, limited colors, so that's oh. what I was going for. And then I just, I needed something to break them up, so I was going for light here, yeah. and then just a horizon line. So. It's a leather, wood, string, uh, printmaking paper, ink, and egg tempera. Um, and it's basically, I, I like to approach my subject matter mainly through storytelling um, and uh, comics narrative style. This particular book is based loosely, very, very loosely on some of my own travels. I studied abroad for a year, um, and this is at quite a time, as you can imagine. I studied in, in Greece, um, and uh, my trip began in Ireland, and that's why this book is kind of beginning there. Um, it, the uh, kind of conceptual backing for this whole thing is what I discovered when I was traveling, um, which is how traveling through foreign lands can kind of shift your perception of reality um, in various ways. How when you see the world through from a different vantage point, things look different. Um, there's a, a great word called uh, mori folk, which is coffee room spelled back backwards. And it's um, something that Charles Dickens saw at one time that kind of made him realize that the whole world was actually a different place when you look at it from a different way. And once you start seeing something in a different way, um, you start seeing everything in a different way. And what I found is that reality kind of approaches you differently once you're in that mindset. Um, and you start getting approached by very, very strange um, energies. And uh, your journey kind of unfolds in an unusual manner.
the family photo album is sort of becoming extinct, especially in my family. So this series here is based on a stranger's family photo album. And I draw a lot from dioramas at like the Natural History Museum. So I wanted my figures to be more realist and then have the backgrounds be suggestive. And mostly I wanted to include drawing, which I love, with sculpture, which I also love, but paint double major in both of them. So. How could play, um, the act of play, transform the creative process? There were sort of two different kinds of play that we engage in. Um, competitive play, and then another kind of play which I ended up calling deep play. And it's where you get really focused on what you're doing, and um, sometimes your intuition takes over. Time will sort of stretch or get thin. I ended up working with a series, I actually made about 40, um, 14 inch by 14 inch square panels, they're all different. I basically played with, with these um, panels, and I ended up um, finding that I needed a little bit of structure, because I'd walk into my studio and I'd go, oh my gosh, what am I going to do today? I'm going to play, but uh, so you just, one of the paradoxes of this whole thing is play, usually there's not deep play, there's not really supposed to be an outcome, but I had to have an outcome for my thesis that I needed to have something I could feel comfortable hanging. So I ended up creating four games um, that evolved out of my work, um, and that allowed me to have a little bit of structure. I found it I needed some ritual and structure in my work to play. So congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for participating. Thank you.